Thank you, Senator Kennedy. Senator Ossoff. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Director Ray, nice to see you again. Always a pleasure to see a fellow Georgian in your position. I want to uh, thank and commend your staff, the Atlanta Field Office, for their professionalism, ongoing work. And I know you have a new uh, SAC there. I uh, wish her the best in, in her new role as well. Uh, Senator Grassley and I recently introduced legislation to strengthen federal protections uh, of children subjected to sexual abuse and exploitation online. Uh, and in fact, the Atlanta field office recently issued a warning to Georgia parents and children about an increase in sextortion cases where adult predators pose online, manipulate minors into engaging in sexually explicit activity or posting explicit photos, uh, then extort those children or their families for money. So I want to ask you, first of all, will you commit to continue to prioritize the protection of children from online abuse at the FBI and tell us a bit about what you're doing to that end. Uh, so I think you're absolutely right. It's an important priority and it, it has only increased in importance. Uh, sextortion in particular. Uh, we've been mounting a very aggressive public awareness campaign uh, about what we're seeing there. And in fact, I uh, not that long ago filmed a, a public service uh, advertisement with the head of NICMIC, the National Center for Missing and Exploited Children. Uh, trying to reach out to parents all over the country. One of the things that we're seeing that's particularly troubling uh, is, a, is an uptake on sextortion cases, uh, not just against little girls, which has been happening for a long time, but against little boys as well. And we are seeing a certain number of these kids, male or female, uh, uh, you know, turn to suicide because they feel like there's no way out. And so it's incredibly important that we uh, as a society, figure out a way to make sure that those kids know that there is an answer, that, uh, that there are people that they can turn to, uh, and that we will do everything we can to protect them. And you'll commit to continuing those efforts? Yes. I appreciate that, Director Ray. And on a related note, that warning that the Atlanta Field Office circulated about sextortion threats to children online appeared in English, but not in other languages. I want to engage with you about the work that the FBI can do to improve language access to the information that you distribute so that communities in Georgia and across the country uh, with limited English proficiency or for whom English is not a first language can have access to the same vital information to protect themselves, their families, and their businesses uh, from threats to their safety. So when the FBI issues warnings like that or, or issues other forms of information or guidance, do you tend to offer that in language other than English? And what steps can you take, perhaps working with my office, we can work together on this to make sure that you have the resources you need to carry it out to improve the multilingual uh, outreach and communication that the FBI does? So you raise a very interesting and important point. We have, I think, over the last couple of years uh, started intensifying the um, outreach that we do, uh, doing it with uh, additional languages, uh, because we've realized that there are victim communities for different offenses, different threats, that sometimes aren't getting the message unless we do that. So for example, uh, I know our New York office has been uh, particularly proactive in that regard, both um, uh, uh, with the uh, in the Jewish community in New York, but also in the AAPI community in terms of you know advertisements and leaflets and things like that that are translated into different languages. So I think we're going to need to do more and more of that, uh, and we'd be happy to follow up with you on how we might be able to be. More That'd be great. Active. Given the growing diversity in the state of Georgia, uh, would love to see the Atlanta field office emerge as the national leader, uh, making sure to convey information, for example, in Hindi and Spanish and Korean and other languages widely spoken in the state so that every community is, is well protected and well informed. Uh, speaking of community safety, uh, you and I have had several discussions in, in fora like this one on violent crime across the country. Georgia communities from Columbus to Savannah, Atlanta to Albany continue to struggle with high rates of violent crime, gun violence, uh, gang activity, other threats to public safety. I don't know when you next have plans to come to Georgia, Director Ray. I hope you'll return home sometime soon. You're extensively experienced in the state. I want to ask for your commitment that when you do come, that you will sit down with me and state and local law enforcement, faith leaders, other community leaders, to talk about how we can all work together to reduce community violence and violent crime in the state of Georgia. Will you make that commitment? Well, I, I, I look forward to meeting with you uh, one of the many times I'm home. Um, uh, I'm always looking for additional reasons. <laughs> 
to leave DC and be back in Georgia. Um, and that's, a wide, that's a widely shared sentiment. <laughs> uh, so uh, we'd be happy to follow up with you on, on, on your request. Okay, looking forward to it. I want to talk to you a bit about uh, how we can strengthen our protection of veterans across the country. Georgia, home to nearly 700,000 veterans, many of whom rely on the VA. And in recent years, many veterans have been targeted as part of a pension poaching scheme where unethical advisors profit by assisting a veteran or purporting to assist a veteran in artificially qualifying for VA benefits. And these scams can tie up the veteran's savings in investments that then earn lucrative fees for the scammer. My question for you is, what is the FBI doing to protect veterans in Georgia and across the country from those who seek to financially exploit them? And can you reassure the committee and people of Georgia and the American people that protecting veterans from abuse and exploitation is a high priority for the Bureau? Well, I can certainly get you more detailed information as a follow-up, but I will tell you that um, you know we are pursuing a number of, of types of schemes and scams that target uh, different kinds of, uh, of populations that for one reason or another are attractive to schemers and scammers. Uh, and when it comes to veterans, uh, it is appalling that there are people that would prey upon the people who have served our country uh, so nobly uh, and selflessly. And in fact, uh, you know, I think that hits particularly close to home for us at the FBI because we have a very, very large percentage of veterans in our current workforce uh, and always have. Um, and so, uh, you know, as they say, them's fighting words. Appreciate that commitment, Director Ray. And uh, finally, just want to touch on a couple of matters related to civil rights, Mr. Chairman, with your indulgence. Uh, I recently wrote a letter requesting that the FBI investigate allegations of severe ongoing gain activity at Pulaski State Prison. Pulaski State Prison, rather, in the state of Georgia. It's our second largest prison for women. Recognize you can't comment on ongoing investigations, but I do want to make sure you're aware of that correspondence and that it's received the full attention that it deserves because of the reports of horrific conditions and the extent of criminal activity within that state prison. More broadly, where does the investigation and enforcement of civil rights violations fall among the FBI's priorities? And if it's a top priority, how is that communicated? To your, to your field offices. Can you assure the people of Georgia and the American people that investigating civil rights violations remains a top priority? So as to your letter, I, I have read it uh, and read it with, with interest, uh, so I can tell you that. Um, as to the um, civil rights enforcement, uh, we, as I think I mentioned earlier, we elevated that to a national threat priority and the significance of that uh, is that it communicates to all the field offices and headquarters division that this is one of the things that has to be one of our top priorities. And as a result, both resources and intelligence collection emphasis flow from that. Uh, and it, it was last year, and it will be again this fiscal year. And what would you say in closing, Mr. Chairman, what would you say, Director Ray, to those who will listen to all this, hear your words on radio across the state of Georgia who want to hear that reassurance from you personally? that you're out there investigating threats to civil rights and civil rights violations? We view our civil rights program as at the heart of our mission to protect the American people and uphold the Constitution. Uh, and the FBI has done some great work in that program over the years, and it's something we're very proud of and intend to stay very committed to. Thank you, Director Ray. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thanks, Mr. Senator Ossoff and Senator Graham.